welcome back to another one of my reading vlogs. So today I am so excited because I'm going to be finishing a series that I have been meaning to finish for a very long time. So about two years ago, I fell in love with Serpent and Dove, written by Shelby Mahurin. Initially, I had read this book on the Kobo, but I loved it so much I had to own a physical copy. Shortly after, I ran to the library to get Blood and Honey. Actually, the only reason I ended up purchasing this book was because I owned the first one on hardcover and I got a signed copy. So that was very exciting. So technically I've not read these two exact books, but I have lent them out. So it has been useful owning these you know, and converting other people to the Serpent and Dove fandom. I know I'm a little late, but about a year after I read the two books, the third one came out, Gods and Monsters, and I actually put it on my shelf so excited to read it and forgot about it. That is a little awkward, but in this vlog, I hope to finish this book and hopefully it is just as good as the other two. Before I actually get into reading this book, I tried to refresh on the first two books and I'm gonna quickly talk about what I thought about those two books before I move on to the finale. So Serpent and Dove was actually one of my first books in the fantasy genre and it's one of the books that made me really fall in love with the fantasy genre and never look back. Okay so this is editing me out here and I realized while I was not doing a recap of the book um, I do feel like I should give some context and some spoiler free what the book is generally about. So basically, Lou LeBlanc, she is a witch and she grew up in a coven. She has left that coven and she now lives in this place where a chasseur, I think it's called, which translates to hunter, essentially a witch hunter, lives. Some events occur which leads them to end up having to have a forced marriage. So a witch and a witch hunter, of course, have to get married and eventually Lou's past at the coven starts to become very relevant and it starts to catch up to her. There's a lot of tension between Lou and Reed and that's basically what the first book is about. One thing I really loved about this book was how well it did the enemies to lovers trope and I loved Lou's character. To me, she felt different to a lot of other female main characters who try and be that not like other girls girl. And as someone who is the other girls, <laughs> I appreciated that we got to see her. It wasn't just this talk. I find a lot of times um, female main characters who are really like strong and powerful, we never get to see them being strong and powerful. We just get to hear people talk about it or themselves talk about them being dangerous or something. Everything that people thought about her, like she would show us, if that makes any sense. One thing I did find a little bit annoying in the beginning was actually liking Reed, who is our um, main love interest. I think he got way too much praise for refusing to hit women, a lot of other bare minimums, and I didn't think he was anything special outside of meeting the bare minimum requirements. I will say I did really love all of the French aspects and I found that I feel like it kept me inside the world. Another thing to note is also all the side characters are not flat at all. I felt like they all got a lot of attention. We got backstory. I got to fall in love with them. At points, I was more in love and invested with the side characters than our main characters. But eventually I did come around to read, mostly because he went through some character development and I think my problem was he also felt very flat in the beginning, but then he very quickly had a lot of dimension to him. He became a really dynamic character. My critique could just be from it being the beginning of the story, so we obviously don't know that much. Overall though, I really love this book. I recommend this book all the time. I think on Goodreads I gave it five stars, and I was so excited to read the second book. This book it did disappoint me. It is the middle book in a trilogy and I'm pretty sure I gave it three stars, which for me is bad. I know for some people that's like a good book, but for me, 
it's not good. I just refuse to give books lower than that because I feel bad. And yes, that's a character flaw in me. I recognize it. I know. For this book, it did something that I am usually not the biggest fan of, which is splitting up and pretty much having the whole book be two different two different novels honestly this worked okay being that it's dual perspective sometimes it was really distracting and every chapter i'd be like okay uh what's going on here you know i have to remember what even the plot is i found that i had a lot of problems that the transition book usually has and I feel like our story didn't really progress until the end. Um, I did enjoy a lot of the scenes in this book. I will say I did particularly enjoy, and I thought it was very well written, Reed's journey. Reed goes through a very emotional journey and I thought it was very well written and I really felt like I was feeling what he was feeling. Yeah, but I didn't absolutely adore this book. So I've mentioned this in a couple of other videos, but it has been a while since I've read the other books. So I have watched some videos and I feel like I know the characters a little bit better now that I've done this refresher and hopefully I'll be able to read this book without too much uncertainty. Also in terms of aesthetic, this one I find is the least aesthetic, which is unfortunate but overall they're pretty pretty books. It is quite thick so I'm really hopeful that this is going to be a great conclusion to the story. I am very excited to be finished with this and know what happens. I guess let's just start reading. Hello, so here's the fit today. And basically I am about 200 pages into the book and it is a lot of read. I feel like Reed's perspective almost is like an outside perspective as if it was written in like the third person. It's good though. A lot of characters that didn't get too much time are getting time now. It's like frustrating, but in like a good way. Like it means like I, I'm caring about what's happening and I'm enjoying it so far. It took a little while to get into in the beginning, but that's just cause I had like been a little confused and now I'm loving it. I'm live laugh and I'm loving it. So that is always good. Also, it just should be noted that if this book was not classified as a fantasy novel, it would be a horror. I am commenting on one particular aspect, a pretty main aspect of the book. I'm just giving facts. Do with that what you will. That's all.
All right, so it's Sunday, which means, all right, what does Sunday mean? Okay, so it is the weekend, so I'm going to be trying to read as much as humanly possible today with my mother. So we're hanging out in here. What are you reading, mom? I am reading The Prisoner by B.A. Paris. Have you started? Yeah. I don't know how many pages there are for the physical book, but I'm on 172 of 508 on my Kobo. But um, she's the author that wrote The Breakdown, which I really liked. And two weeks ago, I read The Therapist that she wrote as well, and I like it. Yeah, it's just a thriller, but nice. not a dark one. I think The Breakdown was my first and only thriller that I've ever read. <laughs> But I'm obviously reading this because this is a reading vlog for Gods and Monsters. So I'm on page, I'm on page 210 of like 600. So we shall see. <laughs> spent a long night trying to finish that book honestly it is so good it's so good now like th she did one of the tropes i hate the most in this world so well and it, i am loving this book so much i cannot put it down i'm gonna finish it on my commute today and i'm just so excited but also so sad to be done because this has honestly been better than i expected and I would 1000% recommend this series to anyone. Hi, so I finished. I finished Gods and Monsters just now. And after taking five minutes to um, cry, I feel like I'm ready to talk about it. Firstly, I'm gonna say I tried my best to read this book before the sunset, but it has literally just set, so the lighting is a little weird, but again, the epilogue of this book. Miss Shelby did not have to do that to us in the last 10 pages. Although honestly, I'm very grateful she did. That was the most beautiful epilogue I have ever read. Also extremely creative. And this was honestly a common theme in this book. There were so many tropes so many throughout this book that normally I would hate and find extremely frustrating but for some reason in this book I found extremely enjoyable to read and I felt like it was all done extremely well especially since this last book at no point was anything happening going the way that the characters wanted it like nothing was going right for the main characters throughout the entire book and honestly I was totally okay with that and I really enjoyed this whole experience and I'm so grateful that I finally picked up the last book and as well I immediately um, and after about 100 pages I was totally back 100% in the world with all the characters. I love these characters so much. Louise LeBlanc is literally one of the best female main characters I have ever read and Reed has grown on me. I wouldn't say he was the best but also something that this whole series does brilliantly is makes side characters that are 
just as dynamic as the main character characters that I root for just as much as the main characters and it's really well done and I love it so much I will always 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 recommend this especially to people who are wanting to get into fantasy and I think it does a beautiful job at describing the witches and their magic. You can tell a lot of thought and research has gone into everything. I know in the beginning I said that I was enjoying the French, but at the end it felt quite unnecessary. And she obviously, I feel like, was choosing words that even if you knew nothing about French, you could pretty easily guess what it meant, which is a good thing, but that's why it was starting to feel unnecessary and it was happening so frequently I was getting a little annoyed. So I have finished the Serpent and Dove trilogy. I loved it so much. This is a five star series for me. I am just in love with this entire world and I'm so grateful for Shelby for writing this series. I would say this is honestly probably my favorite out of the whole series. Then I would say it was the first book and then the middle book last. Even with the problems I had with the middle book, the world and the characters just make it so worth it and I love it so much. Another thing I wanted to quickly say is that these characters are constantly moving. I am currently reading uh, From Blood and Ash, the series, as well, and that is a huge problem that series has is the whole book takes place in like one room or like one building every chapter going somewhere different every book there was all kinds of settings the characters were constantly moving constantly exploring the world was constantly being described it was changing the environment played a huge i feel like some authors no shade need to read this and learn that that is something that they should be doing and it was done so well in these books i loved finally reading the last book and finishing this series. It's an amazing, amazing series and I totally recommend this to anyone. I don't know who wouldn't like this series. Checks all the boxes for me. So that's going to be it for me and thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I really hope that you are reading something that you love or are considering reading this and I will see you in another vlog. Bye.